All right, potties, you're making a difference because of you and the people that listen to the show on Way FM terrestrially, if you want to call it that. We have sent over 47,000 meals to the people that are struggling in Ukraine after they've been displaced because of the war. That is pretty stinking amazing. And I love the fact that you're getting to partner with us in ministry right now in a very tangible way. You're not only helping feed people, but you're also making sure that they get the gospel as well. So thank you so so, so much. But sadly, as the war stretches on, the need is still there and becoming greater. Here's the great news, though. It only takes 25 cents to send one meal. So for about the cost of a dinner out for you and your family, you could make sure that a couple hundred meals are sent to Ukrainian refugee families. Can you imagine what a relief that is for moms who have no idea how they're going to feed their kids from day to day? This is truly ministering to the orphans and widows, like the Bible says in James. And we'd love to keep that going and send another 20 25,000 meals to Ukraine in just the next couple weeks. I'm in. I'll never ask you to do something I'm not willing to do myself. So if you want to help out, just text the word WALLY to 91999. And again, thank you so much for even considering this. And let's make a difference. Let's do something huge today. Again, text the word WALLY to 91999. Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, all the stuff we did not get to during the course of the show today. It seems lonely uh, today without Bonnie, our potty uh, that was here yesterday. Oh, they were she so was nice. Cool. Yeah, their whole family was they so nice. Uh, and uh, she sent a nice thank you note. So it was a, a great time of their trip. Uh, boy, it, we were literally just getting ready to come into the Aftercast with all the stuff that we have planned. And uh, on the news, they're showing that Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court and people are losing their minds. And, and, and I, I get it. Like you, They're showing a lot on the news news of the pro-life side celebrating in victory and not much of the people that are angry about it, which I'm kind of surprised because the news is very much uh, leaning towards, like ABC News especially, is very much leaning towards this is a bad day, not a good thing uh, for women's reproductive rights, as they say. And uh, one of the doctors was like, you know, this is not good for uh, women. And But the flip side of that is it's kind of good for babies. You know, like it's, mm-hmm. it's such a complicated issue. We've made it complicated okay because if we we don't all have the same morals and values that we a- adhere to you know and in, even inside of faith uh, I know that this is an issue that is contested between people as well I think it's I think it's a really sad thing because I see it a little bit differently now than I used to maybe when I was younger. But like, I mean, I I clearly know what it's like to have a child and I clearly know what it's like to be excited about that child being born and from a very early time, from weeks into this, knowing this thing is alive and it's a person and I can't wait to meet her and stuff. And I wish that other people had that same experience because then it might alter, you know, their decisions, but that's not everybody's story, you know? Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately that's where a woman's right to choose does run headlong into what about the rights of this unborn child? I mean, I mean, it is a living, breathing thing. If you were holding a puppy and you decided to just throw it, you know, or kick a pregnant dog, people would lose their minds. And Mm -hmm. so that's why I think we do have it out of balance in our society that we are putting so much emphasis on the right to choose that we are forgetting that it's the right to choose death for somebody mm-hmm. you know and like that's that's a messed up thing man and so again i'm not i'm not uh, I'm pro-life, but I understand there are extenuating circumstances and I understand there are things that are going to have to be taken into consideration here in the cases of rape. That is a horrific thing. The I know the other side of this, the uh, pro-life side says, well, but that doesn't determine what this child can become and be. And I get that. Very much a difficult thing for the mom in that situation, mm-hmm. too. So I have compassion towards that, 100 percent. I have compassion towards women that are in this place that are dealing with a pregnancy they didn't want. But unfortunately, life is we are products of our choices. And, mm-hmm. and, and outside of the case of rape, we make choices and we have to live by those choices, good and bad. Yeah. And also, too, I mean, just because they would ban abortion, it doesn't mean that um, women couldn't get free um uh, uh, protection, like they could, right. get, they could get birth control right, right. for free and all that. Right. Um, I don't know if Plan B is still a thing. It Does, is. It, would that count towards this abortion? Thing? I don't. I, boy, that's a good question. I don't think it would. Um, because that if, would be interesting if it, because if, it did. if that's available. I mean, you still right. have your options. Right. It's not like and and to me, I mean, I can't think 
maybe I'm wrong. An abortion costs a lot of money, right? Uh, not as much as you would think, sadly. I, yeah, I don't know how much uh, it falls it, under like healthcare and yeah, all that I don't kind know. of world. I guess abor- it's abortion. Way less than you would think, right? I guess abortion would come in if you decided, like maybe at first you were like, "Yes, I want to keep the baby," but then later on you change your mind and here's, then you could get one because you can't do that with Plan B. What I think is. When you look at this, and there's a lot of people on both sides that are going to be on the news all throughout the day and tomorrow and, and then for a while, because they're like, hey, this is a 50-year precedent that got overturned. <laughs> Pro-life says, well, it should have never been this way, and so we're just returning it back to what it should be. But you know, pro-choice is like, we've taken a step backwards. You know, So mm-hmm. there's that argument. Here's, here's my thing. If you are going to make this big sweep like this, and it's a big deal, because what it does, if you're not familiar with it, what it does is it basically takes and makes abortion rules, it gives that power to the state. So every state can then have its own rules. And so it will get really murky. There are 26 states that are doing a trigger law that are going to instantly implement this, Mm -hmm. and they can be very restrictive in what constitutes as a legal abortion. Mm -hmm. And so there are people on the other side of this opinion that are going to be freaked out about this because you might have to travel to another state and, you know, to, to, to end this pregnancy. And so like women are mad about that. And, and, and it, again, it it is a mess, but inside of this, I think if you're going to make this sweeping legislation that does lean towards what people are saying, that people are making this a Christian issue. And there's an element to that because a lot of Christians do believe in pro-life and that mm-hmm. terminating a pregnancy is wrong. It it fits in with a lot of what we believe in our faith. But it's not just that. There are a lot of people that aren't believers, you know, in Christ that believe that this is wrong because it's a life. But my point being, if you're gonna swing this side and they and it will be seen as a Christian issue, we should also enact legislation that helps with adoption, that helps with mm-hmm. the aftermath of this decision. Helping single mm-hmm. moms. Exactly. Helping those who do need the help mm-hmm. after the fact. Because that's the thing, man. If we if we say, well, you you can't do this anymore, you know, or if, we, if it's attributed to us saying we can't do this anymore, what a great opportunity to be really better and make adoptions, uh, you know, more plentiful for people to take care, help have organizations and ministries that take care of women that are in a really difficult time in their life and minister to them and actually maybe change the tide of what they how they view this and introduce them to Christ if they're not a, a Christ follower. And so there can be a lot of good that comes from this, but there is, I think there's an onus on us. We can't just change this, celebrate, and expect that things are going to be great because mm-hmm. it's going to be a mess. You know? Right. Because I did hear somewhere where they said, even if these states, you know, ban abortion, it's not that these women won't find a way to get it right. done. It just could put their lives in jeopardy. It could, you know, really be a bad situation. And I feel like I can understand how horrifying it would be to be kind of on your own. Like if you're a woman who is on her own, doesn't have like a good family support right. system to take care of you yeah. when something, when you do have a kid and you have all that fear in you, I understand how you can feel forgotten because this happened and just utterly afraid. So it's it's great for the people that do have a good family support system to take care of you and right. your kid and all of this. So I do understand that. And hopefully, yeah, you do find organizations that step up big time to, to help those mothers. Yeah, because I mean, you think about it. Like, I try to, I try to be empathetic in these big things like this. Even though I have my opinion, I try to be empathetic, and I always picture the the sixteen year old girl who made a dumb decision, and the boy, like not just her. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you know, like it's Two everybody. People. Yeah, absolutely. They did something dumb, and now they're paying the price for it, and they don't have a family that's going to support them. And to make that decision as a kid. I can't even, yeah, it's, I, I know, I know, I know how hard that decision is, you know, and stuff. And so I think that inside of this, even in the celebration, I, I think we have to be careful again, if it gets attributed to Christians and we are not kind in our joy or satisfaction with the result, I think that is going to really make this harder. But I think if we show compassion, empathy, kindness, and not victory, that 
we accept there is work to be done and we can make this better, I think that will go a long way to helping some of this be a, a, a better experience for people who are on the opposite side mm-hmm. of it. There's something about doing a victory lap when you win that's never uh, uh, appreciated by anybody, you know, mm-hmm. except NASCAR. Uh, they do yeah. a victory lap. Um, so I think if we can minimize that, it will help at least in these initial stages. But this is going to be something to watch for a while, man. Like this, this isn't over. I mean, by any stretch of the imagination. I sat here i mean three years ago five years ago when this was being brought up it was had come to a head again and i literally said oh that will never be overturned like i just i our our country's gotten so liberal that there's no way Mm -hmm. ed is crazy that Mm -hmm. this is happening you know and it's be and again this is why having people that align with your political values in office and and in in the office of the president matters because when those justice seats come up, they appoint them and they appoint them for life. And so Kavanaugh was appointed under um, uh, Trump. I think uh, Amy Coney Barrett was uh, appointed under Trump, also conservative. So like, all of a sudden, the, the the shift on the Supreme Court became conservative. So you've got the House, and uh, the House is just crazy liberal. You got the Senate, which is almost. I think I think there's a Republican majority in the Senate, but just by a little bit. Um, and then you've got the president and and everything like that. So there's this pull in our country between conservative and liberal. And so voting in that person, even if you're not a big fan of them, can do something for your long term uh you know ideologies or theologies, you know, like because I was I was not a Trump fan. A hundred percent. Not a Trump fan. I don't think he's a good man. I really don't. Um, I liked fiscally what he had mm-hmm. to do. I'm a big fan of what the stock market looked like when he was in office. Not a big fan of where we're at now. But I do not think he was a good man. And I couldn't vote for him on that basis. But, you know, what he did... He- in putting in people, the justices, is going to have a really long-reaching effect far beyond any of his stuff and January 6th and all that other stuff. I mean, and this really just goes to show that today, uh, what that happened. So the point of that is, is man, however you believe, you m- make sure you vote. Because even though you're voting for the guy, you know, that maybe is not the best or maybe he does things you like and don't like, sometimes it has a bigger picture than the daily day in, day out of what the president affects. And in cases like this, it's it's being evident. So, uh, all right. So that's enough of the politics. Let's do something fun here. Uh, there were artists who turned down doing the Super Bowl halftime show. Uh, the halftime show is something everybody looks to, look, or a lot of people look forward mm-hmm. to. And there were a bunch of artists that say they uh, turned it down and why. Like Jay Z, he turned down uh, doing the Super Bowl halftime because he was told he'd have to bring Rihanna and Kanye West in to perform Run This Town. I guess he had done a, a, a song with them mm-hmm. and had to bring them in. And he was like, nope, not doing that. And so he, he peaced out on it. Hmm. Right, good on I wonder him. how they feel about that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Dolly Parton uh, turned down the Super Bowl. Can you believe that? I, I can. Well, what happened was Katy Perry asked her to be in her for final performance there, uh, but Dolly turned it down because her husband wasn't doing well at the time. Oh, that's a good reason. Bless. Yeah, absolutely. That's sweet. Yeah. Uh, Adele claims she turned down uh, the, the <laughs> Super Bowl uh, because she doesn't dance and feels it's not about music, but this is the best. The NFL and Pepsi came back and said, um, we are fans of her, but we didn't really formally ask her. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Oops. Someone maybe just threw it out as like a... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, her, hers wouldn't be a good mixture. No, no she's great. Sad. She's music. great. But yeah. no, that wouldn't You work. have to, yeah, the, the Super Bowl has to be like up and going and fun. And like, so I'm try, I was trying to think of the ones I liked. I thought Bruno Mars was fun. Oh, yeah. Like Bruno Mars, his music is just, it moves and it's fun. But then, what, two years ago or whenever it was, The weekend was horrible. Yeah, that was not good. <laughs> that was horrible. That was during COVID, but you can't blame COVID. The songs just were lame. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got J-Lo and Shakira. Remember that one, the oh, Latina yeah. Pride? People mm-hmm. enjoyed that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I want to watch the Netflix special on that yeah. because I saw where J-Lo didn't like that she had to have Shakira up there. Oh, like, wait, I did not know this. What? Yeah. She said that? Yeah, that's Ooh. what I've been told. I haven't watched it yet. But there's some, a, there's a special? She, she, 
Yeah, on Netflix. It's called Halftime or something like that. Oh, I just it just out got about released. This. But it's something about that she didn't. She thought she could stand on her own feet. And oh, she, she could, and she didn't need Shakira up there to kind of be like Latin women kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they did that though. But she's big enough that yeah, there are certain acts that are big enough to do it by themselves. Like Lady Gaga uh, did the Lady uh, Gaga. Lady Gaga. She did that. Uh, but I think Coldplay actually had other people with them, which was a good choice. Mm-hmm. Um, the Black Eyed Peas. Do you remember them? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, is there one that you actually remember, though? I, they're so hard, I think. With Janet Jackson and Justin <laughs> Timberlake. Uh, yeah, we all remember that one. Hmm. I just that, remember Katy like, Perry and yeah, the, the Left, Shark. Left Shark. That's yeah. probably the most I liked that one. Do you remember thing. Aerosmith? Uh, did, uh, Didn't did they come out with NSYNC and Britney Spears? I want to say, yeah, I think they were a combo. What happened is they used to do themes, and it was like, you know, America or whatever, but then they started just going after big artists, mm. and so then they would have big artists, like Bruce Springsteen did one by himself, mm. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. These are back like in the 90s, I think. Um, and then from there, they started combining acts to get to reach multiple right. people and, and really hype it up. They should do Lee Greenwood. <laughs> he should be in every Super Bowl. Right? Absolutely. Uh, this was interesting. Uh, two deputies were disciplined after the death of Bob Saget. Remember when he oh. passed away a few months ago? And uh, two uh, deputies were disciplined. What do you think they were disciplined for? They didn't get there quick enough. I was going to say, because mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. you hear it on the radio yeah. and you just don't start your engine quick right. enough, I guess. <gasps> okay. Do they take a selfie? I have to take a selfie. Oh, oh, that'd be so bad. Can you imagine? Like, click, click, sorry. Uh, no, it's because they actually uh, leaked news about him dying before the family was notified. That doesn't feel like a... Oh, no, before that's a big the family deal. was notified. Yeah, that's yeah. a big yeah. deal. Like that's that's like there are certain things in your jobs that are like non-negotiables. That for cops is a non-negotiable. You do not tell anybody that someone has passed away until the family's notified because it's like the worst thing in the world for a family member to find mm-hmm. out on TMZ, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff. And it's crazy because one of the one of the cops, uh, he told his brother about Saget's oh. death shortly after responding to the scene and his idiot brother posted it on social media. <gasps> oh, You're like, that if, if I'm that cop, I'm, I'm going to arrest my brother. I'm going to look for, I'm going to plant something in his house and I'm going to arrest him when I get back to work because Ow. he was should know better you know like they like come on man don't be a dummy and then the other one was an off-duty uh officer uh who told his neighbor and so they, both of those guys got suspended because you just cannot do that kind yeah. of stuff Ooh. that stinks for them yeah and for the family yeah for sure lady rock what do you got well, Lightyear, the new Toy Story spinoff. Ah, um, yeah. Gavin saw it the other day. I he, did. Yes. Yeah, he did. Well, if you didn't know, so I think thirty minutes into the movie, there is a female character and a female character that kiss yes. at some point. Do they make a big deal out of it? No, it's 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 pretty like. The way that they do it is, right. hey, this is normal. Like they don't make and some that's, that's, massive scene out of it. They yeah. do make it just like the casual quick. Like you wouldn't think about that scene in any regard if it was just a man or a woman. Right. Like you wouldn't think twice about do it. Do you remember back when uh, Finding Dory was about to be released? Yes. There were. Uh, I don't know if there was an official statement or if it was just people assuming, or maybe Disney did say something. But um, there's one part where there the the squid or the octopus and Dory are trying to get across um, the street at the aquarium. Right. And there is a two women and it looks like they're a couple. Oh. They've got a stroller. Oh. Do you remember that? I don't remember and that. And a lot of people were like, we're going to ban finding Dory. Right. And it was like this, I mean, two second mm-hmm. spot. Uh, well, I guess nothing came of it. I'm not sure, but I, it, you know, then this is definitely like this there's is no going there's all no in. question about right, it. Right. Right. Well, uh, there's a theater in uh, Kingfisher, Oklahoma City, and they posted a message on their window. It's a sign, so a window on the building, and it says, "Attention, parents. Uh, we were un- we were told that there is a kiss at the it, within 30 minutes of the new Pixar movie. We will do all we can to fast forward through oh. that scene, but it might not be exact. We apologize for any inconvenience this late that's discovery funny. of the scene causes. Uh, that's fascinating. So they're going to, I guess, have someone up there in the in the camp. Yeah, yeah. And fast forward." 
support it. They're going to they're going to take so much heat for that. Like there are countries that are banning the film uh, in the Middle East, especially. Uh, but they will take this state, this uh, film, this theater will take massive heat from that because the LGBTQ uh, community is super vocal. And when they find out about things and they feel they're being oppressed, they go nuts on you. And mm-hmm. this is this is kind of my problem inside of this, because they went from being concerned about representation to now being about domination. Mm. Like now it's like you have to accept everything about me and I'm going to put it everywhere and it's going to be in your face. And like Gavin said, it's treated like it's just normal, yeah. you know? Right. And the reality is, is no, I do not have well, to agree with you. At first, I was listening to a podcast about this. It was like, you need to just be okay with it, that right. it, it exists. Now you need to... Um, you need to be cheering for it. Right now, you need to participate. Right. So you, even yeah. if even Support. if you're cheering, that's not you, yeah. Even if you're supporting it, that's not enough. Right. Now you need to participate and mm. even be active in these uh, in 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 these parades exactly. or anything. Like it's just going one step further. One step that's like the it's not enough part. unless you're right. like you can't even. I mean, I think it's okay to disagree with people on things, but be respectful. Sure. respectful of it but now you can't even disagree you because then that's considered hate yeah i started writing something on this and i'm still playing with it because it's so hard when it's in print because everybody takes everything wrong but it it, it became very schizophrenic because i see both sides of the story like so if you're not a, a christian and if you uh or just if you just are, are a person that believes that uh that none of this is a problem And then you want to see your lifestyle represented places. You want to see it in commercials. You want to see it here. You want to see it there. Mm -hmm. And and if if Mr. Incredible can kiss his wife and you have no problem with your lifestyle in the LGBT community, then why should that not be? It should be normal is what their position is. But there is 97% of the country, because the LGBT community is a small percentage of our thing. There are 97% of the country that isn't that. And there's a great portion. Of that ninety percent that says no, I don't agree with this. Mm-hmm. I don't support this. I don't think it's right, and I have the right to believe that and not be thought of as a bigot. Mm-hmm. I don't have to accept everything because here's the reality: everybody has their line. So LGBTQ says we want to include everyone and everybody, and you have to, you have to, you have to. But they're not going to include uh, lifestyles that they deem as. Uh, not acceptable mm-hmm. pedophilia they better not mm-hmm. you know and 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 but but wait that's i'm living my truth this is mine well you hurt other people well you know you could say that indoctrinating other people so i mean it gets real schizophrenic when you start to think about this and then people go oh well you're comparing comparing us to pedophiles well that's not right we're not that and i'm not saying that but i'm saying Every community has their list of people that they will not accept. And mm-hmm. if you look at the the LGBT community, they will not accept believers. And so many times on the basis of, oh, you're a Christian, you are a hate monger. Mm-hmm. Not true. I don't hate you at all. I have mm-hmm. no, I, 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 I don't, I don't have a problem with mm-hmm. you. But my problem is, is that that arc that Betty was talking about too, where we went from, you know, representation to domination, mm-hmm. like, and where it's being pushed into every facet of society and as Gavin was saying it's it's supposedly it has to be this is the norm and this is okay and this is what life should be like and I don't necessarily agree with that well and I think too and, and this is sad to say but I do believe that the LBGTQ community uh, I don't even know there's a I plus in there right. and some I'm not other sure. stuff but anyways that community they are all about showing acceptance no matter who you are you are accepted as long as you agree with them true but why people i think why a lot of people stand behind that community is because there is acceptance and we all do want acceptance Mm -hmm. for who we are as human beings right whether we are attracted to the same uh gender or not but i think sadly that acceptance that what everybody's looking for that peace in their hearts that they can be accepted for who they are should be found in the church it should be found in the christian community but we didn't do a good job of promoting that instead we're promoting what we disagree with sure. and what we won't stand for which has its arena but also people are standing because because the LGBTQ community is all about acceptance, all about love. And when you think about the church community, it's not. 
I think it's about more of you saying, I'm standing for what I disagree with. Right. And so I think it's a lack on us saying they they don't feel like they can find acceptance in that community. Sure. And and I and there's there's definitely truth in that that we have not done the best job at being accepting and loving and we've been judgmental in things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But that's the a same stereotype. Can be, yeah. Right. Right. The same can be said for them Absolutely. as well, the LGBTQ. But what I'm saying is the world has painted it right. to look like the church is not accepting they are hateful right. and the LGBTQ will take you for however you feel right. you are, whether that's a wolf, a cat, right. a dog, right. a turtle. Because there's no, there's no boundaries, you. you know, right. and that's the problem. But even then they do have their boundaries. They just won't talk about them. Right. Exactly. But I'm saying they have more of a community that's enforcing them and backing them up right. because they have gone with the idea of they accept you for who you are. They are all about love. Right. Whereas the Christian community, that's or the, the church community, but is see, not. that's the marketing of it. Oh, that's, I agree. Yeah, that's the marketing of it. That's but it's not, not the, the reality, truth. Right. exactly. Right. They are some of the most hateful people in the the advocates and the activists are like ours and the Christian side can be some of the most hateful people on the planet. Mm-hmm. Sadly, you know, when you're fighting for what you believe in, I think my my big problem comes from, and I've said this before on the air. I don't care. Your sexuality is none of my business, but you keep making it my business. That's mm-hmm. my problem. When this becomes the agenda and not only like you said not only do i have to accept it and see it as normal now i have to celebrate it and if i'm not participating in it then somehow i'm a bigot absolutely yeah. not but now you take people with adult issues like and these are our adult issues that we're talking about mm. and that's not enough anymore now it's like okay we got to get the kids we got to get mm. kids in in third grade and talk to them about gender identity and talk mm. to them about changing their gender gender before they're 12 like mm. no absolutely Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. There is a point at which inside of this world, you have to choose a side and you've got to say enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody does it for different reasons. And on the LGBTQ side, they say enough is enough of you restricting me and I can do what I want to do and be who I want to be. And then the other side says, hey, enough is enough of you indoctrinating children into what you as an adult have struggled with or believe, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's, that's, I think that's where I have a problem when Disney starts putting it into their art, you know, yeah. and that's geared towards children. I do have a problem with that. And so yeah. for me, like the big part of what I was writing was I'm not canceling Disney. I'm not a cancel culture person, but I will choose selectively what I support. And hopefully by what I choose to support and give them money because they are a money company that will tell them what's working. And so if I choose not to support Lightyear, like I'm not going to see it because Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to say, and I really wanted to see this, but I'm not going to stand here and and come out uh, against it and then, and say, I want to be selective in how I support them. And then go watch it. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't do that. And so for me, I hope that by voting nay against that, and it's not done well, like that's the crazy thing for them, that if you tell them enough of what you don't want to see from them, they will start to create what you do want to see mm-hmm. when the majority, you mm-hmm. know, but they have a huge bent inside of their company and they always have that is super, super, super tolerant, accepting, promoting of LGBTQ. You're never going to get rid of that as um, it's not going to go away inside of that company. So you either have to figure out your way, cancel it all, or pick and choose what you want to uh, subscribe to for your kids and you that still aligns with your values and the things that don't cut them out, you mm-hmm. know? And so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm not a, uh, it's not a cancel Disney thing. It's uh, be selective in what I support. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, but that was, oof, that was, uh, a lot of big issues today. A lot of drama. <laughs> a lot of drama. <laughs> I know. What are you do? That, that's da, 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 the world we live in, though, man. Unfortunately, that's the world that we live in. And these are the conversations that I actually really enjoy having. I, I, I'm I, not a fan of avoiding conversations on the radio because we just don't have enough time. I'd rather drop a bunch of songs and have these conversations on the radio personally. <laughs> uh, so that's why I'm thankful every day for the aftercast. All right, Lady Rock, do you have any birthdays for I us? I do. Let's do it. Uh, Abigail wants to wish her mother-in-law, Tracy, a happy birthday on the 26th. So Sunday she'll be celebrating. She's a great role model and raised my husband to be an incredibly uh, caring uh, person. Nice. So uh, Jarius, J-A-I-R-U-S. I, that's what I would have gone with too. Yeah. Uh, to, 
Today is Jarius's birthday. Yeah, today. Um, said volunteers with the Civil Civil Air Patrol. Oh, very what? cool. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, Ethan, today is his birthday as well. And then um, yesterday, we had two late birthdays. Zach wants to wish his mom, Jessica, a happy birthday, saying she's the best mom I've ever had, which is interesting because... Probably your only mom. <laughs> Not going to have well, another I, well, one. I guess you could have a stepmom. Like, or a mother oh, I guess so. Yeah. 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 Uh, Naomi, she celebrated her birthday yesterday. So we have a question from, uh, let's see, um, well, an important one from Naomi. What's your favorite dessert? I'll bake it and send it to uh, y'all next week. Mm, I like that question. Let's be very careful with what we say. <sighs> because Dipless. I want to make sure. Wait, no, yeah, no, no, that's no, it. no, I've already said no, it. No, it's a Greek pastry. No, it's dip not. no, 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 that's not. <laughs> that's unsendable. Us, Naomi. Cheesecake? Mm, no, no, it's too hard to send. Cookies? Cookies are probably. Can we say the anything best. other than cookie brownies? I guess you brownies. I, even that sounds. They'd be in a package. Mm, chocolate for... molten lava cake. Oh, oh, lava cake would be good. Lava cake's the best, but it's just not going to send. Honestly, gonna I feel like we'd be happy with it. Cookies, cookies, cookies great. send well. <laughs> yeah. Cookies send well. Uh, then Zach said, "What dinosaur would you be in Jurassic <laughs> Park?" Oh, I just saw this actually, yeah. and it was it was it was an it's an adventure. I still want to see it. Yeah, it's worth. I mean, it's worth it. Yeah. You have to mitigate your it. your expectations. Don't go in thinking it's a great movie. Uh, go in thinking dinosaur you're going to see dinosaurs. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. There were a couple funny homages and callbacks to the first one, like the Barbasol can and oh, stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, that was, that was good. Uh, I think I know what dinosaur I would be. I would Hangrosaurus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would for sure. I would definitely not want to be a herbivore because who wants to eat leaves for the right. rest of their life? Right. Um, I would want to be that spitting one, the one that looks innocent oh, yeah. Yeah. and fine, oh, but, like, but then bah! he like... Yeah. Those little, they those scream things, and yeah, those things it come shows out of the up side, in this and one. And then he spits on you it's and then you die. One. Yeah. Do you remember that you one? You want to be it that kill, one. Yeah, it killed she the villain that in, the, in the guy in the first one. one. Yeah, yeah that's the, the one I want to be. The Barbers all can. See, it yes. all it, They show up again. If you like I that, then do that. You will feel really good about that if you if that's the one you want. Either that or the one that is able to figure out how to turn the doorknob. Raptors. I like the Raptors. Those are pretty I would do either one of those. Blue is back in this one, too. I don't remember that one. That was fine. the one with um, what's his face? That's Chris Pratt's Chris little pet raptor. Oh, blue, my, yeah. My yeah. favorite thing about the whole movie is that there's like these massive dinosaurs with like millions of years of instinct, millions, quote unquote. Yeah. I don't know, years of instinct, and all Chris Pratt does to like stop them, just puts his hands out. Yeah, and well, they just don't, they don't, they don't come at him because he's, he's just, Chris Pratt. He's got the power. Yeah. He's a dinosaur <laughs> whisperer. Uh, I've always been uh, partial to the Triceratops. Uh, like the one that has the three horns and the big and just thing. a thick head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I have a thick head, and that's I the would... one that had the tender tummy in the first one. Yes, uh, yes. And so mm-hmm. I would like to, I would like to be that one because it'd be big for once. Mm-hmm. And oh. Gavin, what would you be? Oh, uh, a short, slow, <laughs> lazy one. Um, <laughs> I can't think of. Pterodactyl would be kind of dope because you'd be flying. Yeah, that's. I'd be. Down to fly. Yeah. Did y'all ever see The Lamb Before Time? Oh, yeah. No. I grew up on that. I didn't. It will bring a tear the first to episode? a glass eye. Mm-hmm. The little green It is a- so dinosaur. sad. The long neck. Ah. And he has to Mother? carry. Yeah. And he carries his leaf with him. Yep. Tree star. Tree star. Yes. And then there's <laughs> Ducky. There's uh, Sarah. Yeah, uh, Ducky Spike, and Spike, Petrie. I'm assuming Petrie. they don't eat each other. Nope, they're no, kids. No, uh, but they're, they're, it's kids. Just, they're trying to find their family because there was a big earthquake and it separated them. Mm-hmm. And it's just so... They are friends with a little T-Rex. His name is Chomper. Oh, okay. oh Chomper. That's but he's good. got you know T-Rex instincts, so they have to maybe be careful. That, maybe that's in another one. I never saw... I saw there's there's like a, so there's many. There's so many. I watched yeah, so many Yeah, they got up to like 20. Up. Yeah. But I only saw the first one. It was so oh, good. I loved it. He's a long neck. In this one, in three the... horns don't associate with long. Oh my goodness, that's nice. a good, that's a good memory. In the Jurassic Park one, it has uh, what's his name uh, from the Apartments commercial. What is his name? Oh. Change your apartment, change oh, your life. Uh, it had Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum, because he's in the original yes. first, and he's, he's first really good one. in this. There's a new character that they introduce who was like the right hand man of the guy from Biosyn or whatever. Mm-hmm. That guy, the, villain. A, the the yeah. The right hand man guy, I love that guy. Yeah. I don't even know who he is. Great actor. He's in a Netflix show, and I can't remember the show's name. And I would not recommend it to okay. as like a on our show. I wouldn't sure. be like, hey, everyone, go sure. watch this. 
Um, but I really think he's a good actor. He was, like he was great in this. He's like really new, but I really like him. He was. He was. I think he was one of my favorite parts yeah. of the of the show. Actually, uh, in the first one, I definitely did not like where he was shirtless. I'm like, put put the shirt back on. Who's shirtless? Uh, Jeff Goldblum. Oh, he was. Yeah, because he got bitten or hurt or something, oh, and they yeah. show him at uh, one point, and he's well, like <laughs> relaxing with no shirt on. It's like, oh, there's Jeff one, Goldblum. There's come a good, on. I think because in the original one, you see him a lot with like. Everything unbutbuttoned, and you can no. see just and in this, and then this. Like you don't see no, Jeff not in this one. No, that's the think, original oh, one. Okay. But this you one, he actually Jeff Bo- Goldblum and think. Yeah, there's one scene though where he has like an extra button unbuttoned, no. and one guy does look at him and goes, "Yeah, really?" Shakes, yes. shakes his head. Yeah. And he's like, "Don't do that." Man. Yeah, call. see, you'll Good like call. it. You'll like it. Good it's call. fun. All right. Well, with that, I think that's going to end it. For no, it's not. We got to talk about our weekend. Is it Friday? Oh my god. Weekend plans, weekend, weekend plans, plans, everyone's weekend got a weekend, weekend plans. plans. Oh my goodness. How could I'm, we forget? Oh, Wally, I forgot go. I'm going to Betty Rock's home away from home, Dollywood, <laughs> where I hope I see Dolly Parton and get my picture made with her. That would be amazing. You need to document the trip. If you think about it, like post some stories. Okay. You that should get great. yourself an airbrush t-shirt. I know, I know. <gasps> Don't copy me. Betty Rock and her airbrush t-shirt. Don't copy me. Uh, so that's so you're really... leaving today. I'm you're, leaving today, yeah, as soon as we get out of Sunday. here. you're coming back Sunday. Yeah. Late? And, early? Uh, pff, I don't want to be back early enough. I like getting back early did, on the yeah. day before work. Yeah. Uh, and you're looking at not Sasha Saturday? Yes. Thank you. I got a reminder on my phone so that I don't forget because I, I will. She appreciates that. <laughs> she likes a little thing she calls life. Uh, <laughs> likes to live. Um, oh, I, oh, you've got the parody. I think seat. that's it. Yes. This was when Betty Rock it went. Like she wanted an airbrush t-shirt, so I did a parody song for her to, I think it was Zach Williams. Zach Williams. <laughs> so there was Jesus. When I left my house, a girl who had no dreams. True story. <laughs> then all at once there it was standing in front of me. In the window showed its vibrant color scheme. Every t shirt. So good. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I was shaking in my dreams. Yes, it's trashy, but it's so mean. <laughs> Country couture in a store at Dollywood. I must have it, so I bought it. Cost a day's pay to look hot in. But I don't care, cause I really need help to flirt. Oh. <laughs> Airbrush t shirt. Oh, I don't regret it. Trashy, yeah, but no. I- <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I am tonight going with a friend of mine to do um some pottery where oh, you get to choose what? like what you want to do and then paint it and then put it. it in the oven or whatever. Oh, not making it. You're painting. Painting. No, painting yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah painting fun, pottery. So that'll be fun for her birthday tomorrow. I'm checking in on Sasha, yes. and then that is the only plan I have, and I'm super oh, wow. stoked about it. Right, well. And then Sunday, I am going to church, and then afterwards, some friends of mine, mm-hmm. we're going to go see the Elvis movie. Oh, oh that does come yeah. out. Oh, it's yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah so, so far, the reviews have actually been pretty good on it, which I surprises know. me hmm. and worries me. People love their Elvis, so yeah. for them to do it right, and it's got Tom Hanks in it, I but know. Tom Hanks looks... Fat and yeah, he does. It's got like jowls and yeah. stuff. It's crazy, but um, I'm excited to see it. So. Gavin? Uh, I think this is going to be quite a chill weekend because we've had two in a row of traveling to Gatlinburg ourselves, mm. Kansas City last weekend, so it's like could use a couple days to like really not be doing anything. Yeah. Yes. And then Haley's also just sort of sick. She's been not too, too bad, but enough that she just doesn't want to do anything, mm-hmm. so good that means her. I'm not going to do anything nice. probably yes. so nice. i'm looking forward to seeing how chill day i'm hoping jasper lets me sleep in tomorrow because he's, he's still been pretty <laughs> good up dead so yeah. i would rather um i'm hoping well you're gonna have to get your second win because you've been yawning up i know time. i'm really tired man uh <sighs> all right well with that that is gonna do it now officially and we'll do this all again on monday thanks for being a potty <laughs>